Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. So today's topic kind of pairs along with yesterday's topic, where we discussed the differences between men and women in regards to nutrition, and today we're going to discuss it in regards to training. So just like we said yesterday, this is not an exhausted list, so um, you could go through and make this a very long podcast if I wanted to. But this is kind of to introduce it, get some good general concepts that I think everybody can take from this podcast and apply immediately to their training. And then if people had more specific questions, they could always follow up with an email. Our email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. So, uh, the other thing is that everything I'm about to say is generalities. So we're going to be discussing in regards to one specific thing here is strength differences between men and women. Now, there are a plenty of women who are stronger than men. <laughs> Abso-freaking-lutely. So, um, I'm aware of that. Uh, painfully aware of it, because there's actually women stronger than me. Ugh. <laughs> so, but, um, good for them, and it's freaking awesome, and it's good motivation for me. Um, but, uh, I will be discussing that, in general, men are stronger than women. So, I am well aware that there are women who are stronger than men, but, again, this is kind of generalities. We're kind of introducing topics so you just have to kind of like go with me here. <laughs> so don't beat me up too much. I'm aware that women are freaking awesome and strong as hell. So now that I kind of got the please don't yell at me too much out of the way, let's get into the details. So uh, the actual training details. So when you when you think about the, like the physiological, like the actual things that go into training, like the concepts you would uh, be concerned about. Um, they're going to be about the same. So muscle tissue is muscle tissue. So the actual structural, like, uh, the actual structural details of muscle tissue is exact same if you took muscle from a man and muscle from a woman. So, like, what it takes to beat up and damage muscle tissue so it grows either bigger or stronger in men is the exact same process in women. So there's no difference there. Um... Also, the, the process of using training to burn off bat, body fat, to lose body fat, is exactly the same as well. Now, there are a little bit of like variances here and there, and I want to give one uh, example because I want you to know that I'm aware that there are small things in here that I'm skipping. Um, there are some studies that indicate that if women do um, a short bout of high-intensity interval training, uh, cardio, which is like intervals. So maybe they sprint for 10 seconds, walk for 30 seconds, sprint for 10 seconds, walk for 30 seconds. But if they do interval cardio at really high intensities before they lift weights, some studies have indicated that women utilize fat better as fuel than during the weight training session. So in a sense, they would do some cardio to burn up some glycogen, which is stored carbohydrates in the muscle. And there's an asterisk around everything I just said there, but just go with me here in a second, okay? So, if women do higher intensity interval training, cardio, they can burn up some glycogen, and then they're more likely to utilize body fat as fuel than during weight training. So, there's studies that indicate that. Now, when you put this into actual practical application, because I've been aware of that study for years and years now, and um, I used to do it uh, back when Brutal Iron Gym used to actually have cardio equipment. So uh, back when I first opened the gym, we actually had treadmills and step mills because no one would join the gym because they thought that stuff was absolutely necessary to lose fat. So I just played along and got members to join and then I sold all the cardio. <laughs> so uh, because you absolutely don't need that crap. Um, but anyhow, <laughs> so back when we used to have cardio, I would have women do uh, HIIT training before our weight training. And um, there are some differences between like the studies and the environment and the way people do studies versus the real world. So one of the differences is when I deal with most regular people, and even some competitive people in their off-season, they're not fueled super-duper well. So they missed a meal here, they didn't hydrate well, they kind of didn't come in at their best. So therefore, if the in interval cardio was too aggressive... It would do a really good job of burning glycogen, but then they'd be left with nothing. So our weight training quality, our weight training intensity would actually decrease. And you'd have an overall reduction in stimulation for muscle development as well as fat loss. 
So sometimes if the interval training was too aggressive, and I mean it would even be 10 minutes or less, they just, their nutrition was that poor that they got worn out and had nothing left that quickly. Um, but that's something to consider as a trainer is, okay, the studies say this, but what am I really working with here? <laughs> you know, so if the studies are for collegiate 20-year-old males, and I have a 45-year-old male who hasn't done diddly since he was 18, I might not be applicable. <laughs> so um, you can take maybe the concept of the study and try to apply it, but you're not going to be able to apply the actual um, exact protocol. So that was one thing, is people aren't fueled always properly for it. And then I found that if we did an interval training uh, cardio, they still had to have some kind of movement prep and they still had to work on small weaknesses and it kind of just chewed up a lot of time. So what I do a lot of times for my clients is we have them start with circuits that involve kind of dynamic movement. So maybe lightweighted, kind of moving their body around, getting their body kind of opened up and ready for the workout. And then we'll mix in core. I might even mix in, like we have a Concept 2 rower that we can attach, attach various handles to. So we made a universal handle connector. So we can put on D-rings and some other stuff and make them do, you know, face pulls to work on their upper back and postural muscles at the same time they're doing a cardio warm-up. So that kind of works well. We have a ski erg. So we do a lot of like um, kind of metabolic conditioning from CrossFit as our movement prep warm-ups. It's a low intensity metabolic conditioning, but it serves as a high enough intensity to take the place of that hit cardio that that study had recommended. So there are ways to fudge the details to actually make it more effective. So I get the heart rate variability that I want from the hit cardio, but I also get the movement preparation and core work, as well as addressing small weaknesses like postural things. So I can layer all that into the first 10 minutes of the workout. So it's pretty badass. You can kill a lot of birds with one stone. So that's what I found as more beneficial, and that would be true of males versus females. I mean, males and females. So males might not get as great of a you know, glycogen versus body fat storage kind of utilization during their workout, but it's still an awesome way for them to warm up. And then maybe for women, if that study actually is true, it serves the purpose of meeting the requirements for that uh, process to happen, but doing all the other pr um, productive things as well. So real quick, since we're on it, um, talking about fat loss through training, I want to give three good podcasts that if you haven't checked out yet, this will absolutely save you from stupid, endless amounts of time on cardio equipment. So there is absolutely zero reason why you should ever do more than 30 minutes of continuous cardio. Now, if you want to do it, you're psychotic and good for you. <laughs> you can if you want to, but you don't need to. So people who think they have to spend an hour on the step mill, you know, or an hour on the treadmill, you absolutely 100% do not need to. I have gotten people pro cards in aesthetic sports, and they never spent more than 20 minutes at a time on cardio. Okay, I promise, 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 you are not special enough that you need to be tortured in that way. Okay, so I've worked with well over a thousand clients. Like I said, I've helped people get pro cards. I know what I'm doing, <laughs> and the proof shows it more than me just saying it. So you absolutely do not need to spend more than 20 minutes on a piece of cardio equipment. Okay, now go listen to podcast number 30 about muscle cardio, how to lose fat without losing muscle. That'll explain one of the reasons of why you don't need to be on treadmills and step mills forever and how to use how to lose fat faster than actually being on step mills and treadmills. Um, podcast 181 titled Using Muscle Damage for Fat Loss explains how you can use weight training, resistance training to lose body fat greater and faster than just cardio alone. And then podcast number 120 is about cardio. What type should you do and what amount? Okay, so go check out those podcasts to understand how to save yourself from the, you know, the, the hamster wheel of cardio. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we have here is some of the physiological differences between men and women. So sometimes people say like, why do men build muscle faster than women? And a basic general reason is testosterone. So just a hormonal profile is different amongst men and women. So um, the more testosterone you have, the more muscle you can have. It just speeds up the muscle building process. There's a whole bunch of science behind it, but uh, I'm not going to get into that. Um, 
So just know that since men have more testosterone, they are going to build more muscle, okay, and muscle faster. So when people take steroids, for example, they take uh, either straight up actual testosterone or they take derivatives of testosterone that help produce, uh, increase their natural production of testosterone. But steroids are commonly based around testosterone. Now there are, like within the umbrella term of steroids, there are things that are androgens versus um, uh, anabolic. There are like cutters versus gainers and there's a whole bunch of crap and some other stuff in there, okay? But in general, the more testosterone you have, the more muscle you're going to have. So that's in general why men have more muscle than women. In general. <laughs> so, um, and the other reason is more muscle mass. So men, since men tend to have more muscle mass starting out, it means that the exercises and the movements that they do, they can typically use heavier weight. And the heavier weight then causes more muscle stress and damage to the body, like uh, damage to the muscles, and they're going to get, therefore, a greater um, stimulus for growth. So what this means is, is if a man does three sets of 10 of an exercise with 100-pound dumbbells, and a woman does three sets of 10 with 50-pound dumbbells, the man is going to get more muscular stress and overall system stress from moving 100-pound dumbbells than the female will. Therefore, the man's going to get a greater stimulus for muscular change. Therefore, they're going to get a greater amount of muscular change. So simply because a person who is stronger can then move heavier things that create more damage, therefore, they're going to get faster changing of progress. So in general, since men are stronger, they're going to get more, faster results than women due to that strength difference. Okay. Now, women can combat this by using methods... Um, that increase uh, the muscular damage that they're able to achieve. So, for example, in our gym, we have a bench press that has the abilities to add bands from above the bar. This is called reverse band bench pressing. So you can go on our Instagram and Facebook and stuff and find some of the videos and stuff we put up about this. And on YouTube, by the way. So you can go to Brutal Iron Gym on YouTube. We have our own channel, and you can just search for reverse banding, and you'll see what we're talking about. But... Um, Reverse band bench press allows you to overload the bench press. So you can actually have more weight into your muscles and bones than what you could traditionally lift without the assistance of the bands. So on for almost all of my females that we have the capabilities of setting up a reverse band uh, processing. So um, obviously all of my clients who are at Brutal Iron Gym, but then I have online clients as well. So when we're able to set up reverse banding, we do. And um, what that does for females, for example, is they can end up uh, using heavier weights than normal in their bench press, getting more muscle damage than normal, and actually making faster progress. So since I've started using reverse banding with my female uh, strength athletes, they've gotten strength increases faster. So, and that absolutely just fits the science and the model of why, of course, that would happen, because you're creating more damage and stress, and therefore your body has to adapt to it. So as long as you're eating and sleeping appropriately, your body will make the adaptations, and you'll get the effect. So... Some other ways women can combat uh, this effect and work against it to try to get more muscle damage is number podcast number 159, titled Muscle Growth Techniques. So women, go check that out. It's how you can get more progress faster. And then also podcast number 102, which is three ways to progress in strength. So women can actually improve their technique on exercises to help them utilize heavier weights. They can also improve their mental their mindset towards heavy weights. So if they can mentally be more uh, aggressive, and that doesn't mean anger, it just means like, heck yeah, I'm going to freaking lift this thing and I'm going to do really well. So if they can be more confident, you know, more aggressive um, towards heavier things, they can do better and get, get more muscle damage. And also if they improve their technique, they can move heavier weights. So those are two of the three ways you can progress in strength that are independent of gender. So... You can absolutely have an amazing, strong mindset, male or female. You can absolutely have amazing technique, male or female. So that is a really cool podcast, I, I would feel, uh, for women to go check out because it's empowering to know what you can do to control it. So if you have somebody tell you like, oh, okay, well, since you're a female, you're not going to be able to use as heavy weights, you should say, hey, go screw yourself. <laughs> I'm going to use as heavy weights as everybody else, and I'm going to go figure out how to do it. So podcast 159 and podcast 102 tells you ways to do that. Okay. 
Now, on the contrary to why do men build muscle faster than women, sometimes I'll hear women ask, well, how come every time I go to lift weights, I always get bulky? Um, there's a million one reasons, but I'm going to give you the most common ones. And you're, no one's going to like this. Uh, if they have experienced that, they're not going to like what I'm about to say. Uh, but facts are facts. I didn't make them up. I just tell you what they are. So 99.99999% um, of the time, um, women uh, who get bulky when they start lifting weights, it's one of two things. Okay. Number one is you're still overeating. You're still eating too much. So you're not controlling your calories. You might think you're controlling your calories. But maybe you're not counting the oil that you're cooking your meats in. Okay? Or maybe you're not counting, you know, I don't know, some other hidden calories, you know, or things that you think you're tracking, but you're actually not. So I've had a billion examples of this over the years of being a nutritionist. So of where people thought they were controlling things, all of a sudden I'm like, well, have you actually read the nutrition fact label? So I had a story once where a lady was eating applesauce, and I was like, you're not supposed to have sugar in your diet. That was, a, you know, for our case in that scenario. And she's like, oh, well, it says no sugar added. I'm like, added? It doesn't mean there's no sugar in it. I said, you got to read the label. So they look at the label and they go, oh, my God. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, read the damn labels on the damn food you're eating. Holy shit. <laughs> so common sense. So, um, so you might be thinking you're tracking things, but you might be missing things. The other thing is that when you start lifting weights, you cause muscular stress. You actually break like muscle cells and you cause damage to the body. And that can increase water retention due to that stress. So sometimes if a woman lifts weights, the very next day or even that evening, uh, they're going to have higher degree of water retention. And especially if they're not paying attention to the sodium that they eat. So if they have low sodium days and really high sodium days back and forth, back and forth, they're going to have higher degrees of water retention. You throw in a really aggressive workout, all of a sudden their water retention is sky high, they're going to feel fluffy and fat, they're not going to fit their pants, everything's going to go downhill, and they're going to think that lifting weights makes them bulky. Nope. It just caused damage to the body. The body wasn't used to that damage, therefore there's water retention, and this stuff is magnified when you're around your period versus when you're not. So there's a whole bunch of kind of crazy nuances that go on. So... Um, lifting weights, the physical act of lifting weights does not build muscle tissue. So when you actually work out, you are damaging tissue. You're not building it, you're actually breaking it down. Muscle tissue is only built through excess of calories. Only. So if I go into the gym and I lift for an hour, I didn't get bigger muscles. I actually beat the shit out of my muscles. It's only when I go home and I sleep and I eat excess calories that my body can then repair and grow the muscles to be more resilient to the stress that I put them under when we were lifting weights. So you cannot lift weights and get bigger. The getting bigger only comes from increased calories. Only. So that's how we know <laughs> that that has to be one of the reasons. The only other reason, or the only other way, that your body would look fuller or feel fuller is water retention. So that's how we know they're really the only two reasons. You can not get bigger muscles by lifting weights alone. Okay? Cool. So, how about exercise selections? So in general, a bicep curl does the same thing to a man as it does to a woman. So whatever, like if I want to build a nice back, I'm going to pick the same exercises generally for a male that I would for a female. So it's just kind of like muscle tissue, muscle tissue. So if I want to build shoulders, I'm going to do the same exercises that build shoulders, whether you're male or female. Now, there are actually some differences. So in one of the differences are, again, since men in general are stronger, they can achieve uh, sufficient muscle damage with more isolative type movements. So for example, in a lateral raise, if a male can do a lateral raise with a 25 or 30 pound dumbbell, that's gonna tear up some muscle tissue. If a woman is only strong enough to use a five pound dumbbell, five pounds is not enough weight to cause significant growth stress into the shoulders. The only way that you can make five pounds enough is doing a shit ton of repetitions in terms of number of sets, not like repetitions per set. Okay, 
So if I do 20 reps, that's too light and too high of time under tension for muscle growth. So your muscle, um, your time under tension for muscle growth has to be specific to growing muscle. Okay, so um, what we mean by this is if I do an exercise and it's super freaking heavy for 20 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds, that allows me to build more muscle, okay, due to the heaviness and the stress on the muscle. If I do, um, there we go, sorry, I'm looking up a podcast that I think would be helpful for you guys. So if I do an exercise um, where I do it super light and I do it 20 reps, that's going to burn really bad and it's going to annoy my muscles, uh, but it's not going to create enough stress in the muscle. So the muscle has to be stressed. Uh, sorry, the podcast thing isn't working. Oh, well, I'll look it up later. So, but when you're doing an exercise and it's super light, you're not, you're just going to burn like hell, but it's not going to actually cause enough stress into the muscle to elicit a growth change. It might elicit the way it processes oxygen, the way it processes glucose, but that doesn't necessarily make it bigger. So if I wanted the muscle to grow, I have to actually cause muscular damage. And that only comes from something being heavy enough. So the proper uh, time under tension range for muscle growth is going to be between 20 to 40 seconds. And if you're on the weaker end, I think you should be more close to 20 to 30 seconds. Okay. So women can combat this difference by making sure they lift heavy enough things for 20 to 30 seconds. And then they might end up having to do more total sets than men do, because even though they went a little heavier, it's still not heavy enough, so they have to do enough sets to actually wear the muscle out. So, women in general are going to do better with more compound movements. And what that means are exercises that work multiple muscles, therefore they can move heavier weights. So if a woman wants to build really nice arms, they're better off doing pull-ups and rows than they are bicep curls and tricep kickbacks. And the reason why is because pull-ups and rows and pull-downs, okay, they can handle bigger, heavier weight loads, and that causes more muscular stress. If they're doing a tricep kickback with a five-pound dumbbell, that's not going to cause a lot of muscular stress into just the tricep muscle. So the tissue is just more resilient than a five-pound dumbbell. So women are going to benefit more from compound movements then men uh, will. So men can do isolated movements. Women are kind of a waste of time, so they should do more compound movements. Now, also, since women can't create as much muscular damage per set, they often need more total sets. So for a male, I might have them do, say, um, you know, like say they're doing a, like weighted dips. So I might have a male do two to three sets of weighted dips, whereas a female, I might have them do four to five sets of weighted dips. So, or if we're doing like dumbbell chest presses, maybe I'll have a guy do three sets of six to eight reps. Or a woman, I might have him do four to five sets of six to eight reps. So, since women in general can move lower weight loads, they need higher training volumes. And this also includes cardiovascular type things. So, since men are typically heavier, they will burn more calories with the same amount of activity than someone who's lighter. So if a heavy person walked one mile and a light person walked one mile, the heavier person will burn more calories just because they had more weight to move around. So even though the distance was the same, the weight load was not, therefore the calories are not. So women typically need also higher degrees of cardio stress than men do as well. Okay, So women, you need to put in more work. And um, yeah, that's not fair. That sucks. You know, that would be lovely if things were all equaled out. But it just makes sense. If somebody can move heavier weight, they don't need to move it as much as somebody who moves lightweight to try to get the same results. Okay? So, in general, when you sum all this up, is the concepts of training. So what it takes to change and shape and grow muscle is the same in male versus female. What it takes to burn off body fat or use up body fat is the same in male versus female. But there all are some small differences. And in general, women need to lift heavier. So try techniques and exercises that allow you to lift heavier weights. So women need to lift heavier. And they need to lift more volume than men. 
So there are tons of things you can do, like using full body circuits. That allows you, rather than repeating the same body parts over and over again and wearing yourself out and not being able to use very heavy weight, women can use full body circuits. They can also use, like we said, compound exercises that use multiple muscles rather than isolated movements. They can also use different intensity techniques like rest, pause, drop sets, and blah, 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 blah. If you don't know what intensity techniques are, shoot us an email at brutalironjim at gmail.com. We'll send you a list of them. So... But that's in general the difference between males and females is muscle is muscle, so there's no difference there. Fat loss is fat loss, there's no difference there. But how you achieve those things are a little bit different in males versus females. Now, real quick before I end this. At the beginning I said that this was not an exhausted list. There are a ton of little hidden things in between everything I said here. But you can see it's already going to be 26 minutes. There's no way in hell I could have went through everything. So, if anybody disagrees or if they would like any more clarity on something, please shoot us an email at brutalironjim at gmail.com and I'll 100% uh, happily answer it. So that way you come out of this with some clarity and, and you can know how to use this information to benefit your life. So the idea of these podcasts is for fun, just to kind of see the difference between males versus females. But now that you've heard of some of the differences, hopefully you can utilize them and get better results. So to make sure you can utilize them, if you have any questions or things that might prevent you from utilizing the information, that's what I want you to email us for. So if you've invested the time into listening to this podcast, I want you to get the benefit from it. So if there's anything that might hold you back from getting the benefit, please, please, please let us know. Okay? Our email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. Cool. Okay. So if you like this podcast, please share it with family and friends. The more people we help, the happier the world will be. And if you like this type of information, you can find more of it from us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Brutal Iron Gym. Also, if you have any questions, feedback, or suggestions, we'd love to hear from you. The podcast is for you, so we want to know what you want to learn about. And you can tell us at our email, brutalironjim at gmail.com. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening. <laughs>